the way, the way he taught, the way he lived, the way he died, arose again. You know when he died? You know what he said? He said, you know, forgive them, Lord, uh, forgive them. You know, because, you know, what he was basically saying, he saying, listen, okay, even though these people have, you know, uh, you know, have gone against me, I'm saying, forgive them for they don't know what they do. That's not natural to us. So you telling me that Jesus came down for the sinners, yeah, listen, and you're saying Jesus is God incarnate, who was the person that was destroying the nations before Jesus even existed? It doesn't make Is it because that Jesus is peaceful, why they don't, why they follow him? No, come on bro man. At the end they look. No, what I'm saying is that when we look at the, how Moses lived his life and everything, at the end of the day, look, you know he done what he had to do. I don't know if he committed a sin or not, but he still had, look how many followers he has till today. It does, but it's still, the main point is, it didn't discredit him of being a prophet. It still followed him, regardless. See, the thing is, I think one of the things sometimes Muslims misunderstand about Christians is we don't just follow prophets willy nilly. We don't say we follow uh, no, Prophet Moses or we follow the reason we follow Jesus Christ. We were Christians, you know, and so we follow his teachings, uh, we follow um, his conduct, his ethics, you know, the way the way he carried himself. No, I agree. And so I didn't say the reason that, we follow yeah. him is because he's a perfect role model. Now think about it. If you've got a perfect role model, yeah, for us human beings who are, you know. Who have our own, you know, um, our own issues, our own struggles. Okay, we're never going to reach um, per perfection per se. Yeah, but if we reach, if we if we follow a perfect role model, then um, that's the, the example set, and which you know can help us as human beings. Now think about it. You know, see someone like Moses or someone like um, Muhammad or many other people who perhaps you might class as prophet or people our class as prophet like Isaiah and who are, uh, and so on and so forth. They had flaws. You know what I'm saying. But Jesus Christ was sinless. I mean, you can agree that Jesus was sinless, right? I believe in Jesus. No, no, I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm not going to tell you to say that Jesus Christ sinned or not, because that's not even an argument. I'm not. That's not my contention. What I'm saying is, eh, I understand that's why Christians follow Jesus. But what I'm saying, eh, whether a prophet has many wives or a prophet commits a sin, does it still discredit him as being a prophet? That's my answer. What we're asking, what, what the question is, is who? Let's put, let's put, let's put, let's put, let's put it this way. Yeah, because because yeah. We need to understand that. If you see Jesus, yeah, there was only little about him that was spoken about in the Bible. We don't even have full, full, full history about Jesus. Let's be honest. And I'm talking about childhood. We only, the little... Who is the perfect role model? Who is the best uh, role model in, in every sense to follow? Okay, and so for me, if I want truth, I'm gonna um, seek to follow the best role model. I mean, even when growing up as a young person, right? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just, just, just one minute, just one minute. Exactly, I agree with you, right? So the best role model is God, right? Now, obviously, as Christians, we believe that Jesus incarnate in the flesh, came as a uh, man, God came as a man, and um, and he lived this perfect life, this sinless life. And because uh, of this, he, because he, lived, he, he, he set that standard, set that example for the rest of us to follow him. And so I totally agree with you, follow God. I don't follow a man because a man will have flaws, a man will have feelings. We all have perhaps um, members, even um, family members that, that, that's, that's, that's let us down. But when you put your trust in Jesus Christ, he will never let you down because he's he, he, the, way, the way he taught, the way he lived, the way he died and rose again. You know when he died? You know what he said? He said, you know, forgive them, Lord, uh, forgive them. You know, because, you know, what he was basically saying, he said, listen, okay, even though these people have, you know, uh, you know, have gone against me, I'm saying, forgive them for they don't know what they do. That's not natural to us. I'm saying, if someone hurts you, the first reaction re 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 um, is to retaliate, right? But Jesus Christ set a different, he's different president. And so we, we choose him as a role, perfect role model in order to come close to God. Okay. What about people that are not Christians but still have that set mind? 
through the Holy Spirit. Has, what, has that set man what, what you just said? That, um, obviously, you turn the other cheek in it. If they do something, forget about it. Forgive your enemies that actually slay you, innit? People that are not Christians, people that are not Muslims, they still have that set of minds. You know what I mean? Doesn't make it... Doesn't give me the, um, 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 the reason why I should follow Jesus. You know what I'm trying to say? Like I said to you, I believe in Jesus anyway. Obviously, I just don't believe in... Is what how the Christians obviously um, disrupt their Well, you know what? One thing I always say, this, right, okay? One of the things I always say is this it's not good people that get to heaven, like the people you're speaking about. It's not good people that get to heaven, it's forgiven people. So it's people who have uh, appreciated or understood or acknowledged that Jesus Christ died for their sins, okay? And through that, they've come to a place of repentance and Hold on, just, just a minute, just a minute, yeah. And so they've confessed and they've repented and they've realised that they're sinners. Why, why am I saying that? Well, it's because of this, right? The Bible says this in Romans, um, chapter 6, 23. It says, um, it, it says the, 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 the scripture speaks about the, the grace of God. And it, and it says that, you know, it's by grace, through faith, which you are saved. And so, also, the, the, the text uh, speaks about the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So, but also, if you go earlier in, 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 in the book of Romans 3, it says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So that means every single one of us, even the people who you class as a high role model, you know what I'm saying, or people who you think, you know, who, who you say, like, you know, who have these these good um, attributes and good values. Romans, Romans. Romans 3, Romans 3, 3, Romans 3, 23, Romans 6, 23, uh, Romans 5, 8, you find over and over again, well yeah, it's fair, it's fair. it says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so we're all, none of us is exempt, every single one of us, I'm saying, have broken God's, God's holy commandments. And so what I, what I encourage you to do is, 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 is um, what I'm, why I'm saying that is this, is because we can see there's a lot of good people. There's, there's many people, and I'll say you're, you're probably a nice person yourself, but none of us has, you know that the Bible says that we've all fallen short. We're all striving. We all want to be reach that perfection. We've all fallen short because of our, our nature. We're naturally um, inclined to sin. You know what I'm saying? But Jesus Christ, his perfect standard, is who um, we, we now emulate and we follow him now. And so that's why I say it's not just being a good person. You now have to be, um, you, you now have to come to realization that you're a sinner and that you need Jesus Christ to, to cleanse you and to wash you, to make you brand new. And then he gives you his Holy Spirit. And when his spirit is inside of you now, he enables you to be able to overcome, not through your own willpower, but to be able to overcome those temptations, those sins and those things that stop you from becoming um, more like him. And that's what we're just really giving you. The gospel is that Jesus Christ died for your sins. That's simply it, really. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a strong boy, but this is what I'm trying to say, Godwin. You see, when it comes to... Sorry, bro, it looks too much of no, it's right. Is it a Zoom mic? Okay, okay. No, oh, no, come, 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 don't worry. If you want, hold it for a minute. Yeah. Look. Obviously, I don't, I don't, listen, I don't disagree with your opinion, but what I'm saying here, Godwin, at the end of the day, look. For me, as a human being, like, I came to this world by my... I mean, whoever created me. And obviously, I should have the opportunity to worship the one who created me. You see what I'm saying to you? I don't need a mediator to go to. Obviously, I could go. Obviously, if I wanted help, I wanted to find out more about God. If the person that God sent was around at the time, I would go to him. Just like when they say Jesus is the way and the truth for the light. At his time, he was the way and the truth for the light. Because logically, there weren't no other prophets. At, at that time, he was the only one that was actually giving a message. You see what I'm trying to say to you? So, if you look at it in that sense, he was the way and the truth for the light at that time. Because if you wanted to know about God, you would go to him, you will go to Jesus. Yeah. And so, you just said, um, I don't necessarily need a mediator. But as a Muslim, you yourself do use mediators. I mean, you're using Muhammad. Who, hold on, let, me just, let me just respond to what you just said. You're saying Muhammad received revelation. Mediator, yeah. yeah. Sorry, mediator is all proof. Right, okay, okay. But in any sense, you're still using Muhammad, you know, between Allah and um, yourself. Muhammad is the one that brought this revelation, which you believe is true. Well, okay, but, okay, but, but that's fine. But it's, he's the one between you and God, right? He's the one who's... Um, 
Oh yeah, so how do you get a revelation about the God says in the Quran? So basically, I don't go for you for you to go to God. And I'm trying to say, obviously, this is the biggest you. Okay, right. It's not my message, it's the Queen's message, right? Okay, so I'm a mediator between you and the Queen because the Queen ain't directly going to conversate with you, okay? Perhaps, yeah, I'm just giving you a kind of a hypothetical, okay? And so, what I'm saying, in a sense, Muslims also have a mediator because you're going, your only understanding of God's revelation is from Muhammad. And this, let, let, me, let me just quickly finish here. Muhammad received this message from um, apparently an angel um, in a cave, okay? Nobody was there, no eyewitnesses, nothing like that. And then he's given you all this information for several years, since 570 to 6, is it 632? And so he's given you all this information and there's no, um, there's, there is no eyewitness to testify that okay this man is truly a genuine uh, prophet of God. L let me just let me just finish what I'm saying. And so in a sense you also have a mediator. But what I'm speaking about is that God himself, God himself incarnate came down to meet with you on a person on a person but we know that God's a spirit, right? Okay? Now imagine you know a spirit, you know spirit you know it's gonna be a bit difficult for you to try to conversate with a, a being that, or a spirit that doesn't, that's, that's metaphysical, that you can't touch, you can't feel, you can't hear. And so God comes in a physical form and he shows you himself how to live. He speaks, he communicates, he teaches his disciples, he, he tells them to go and make other disciples. He gives them hope, he gives them the good news, the gospel, that they can make heaven their home. And so, and so what I'm simply saying is that this is how much God loves you. See, you see in the Quran, you never find Allah loving the sinner. But in the Bible, the scripture over and over again, in the Bible, in the scripture, no, 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 no. Allah, Allah, you never find Allah loves the sinner. Okay? But in the Bible, over and over again, you find Jesus Christ, or the Bible says, for example, Romans 5 8, when it says, God demonstrated his love towards us, in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. See, God came for the sinner. Yeah, okay, because he loves you and he came to to get to make a way so that you can reconcile back to God. And that's why we're here, that's what this Christmas is, this is the season. The season to give Muslims the, the gospel, the truth. Is that you know that the reason Jesus Christ was born was so that you know that, that, that relationship that God once had with man in the Garden of Eden, yeah, with Adam and Eve. Okay, he once had a relationship with God. With Adam and Eve they, they were, he wants to he wants to bring that back again. Because why? Because we've all strayed away from God because of our sins. And this is a message to you that you can receive that salvation, but you've got to relinquish your sin, you've got to trust in Jesus, believe in what he did for your sins, and you will receive, you receive salvation, brother. There's no other way. It's only Jesus Christ. I hear you, God, you might. I like that. Yeah, no, 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 listen, no, 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 bro. I understand, I understand your opinion. But obviously, you said a couple of things. Obviously, you're saying that. Um, Obviously, no one was there, no witnesses was there at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, just him and the angel Gabriel. But you need to understand as well that if we're looking at that, we have to be um, unfair as well. Because when Paul had a vision, no one, he didn't have no um, eyewitnesses at the time when he saw the vision. He just, it was just the word of mouth of what he said. But then people actually took him and believe it, what he said. Okay, that's one point. And you said that um, in the Quran that it doesn't talk about Muhammad. I mean, so God forgiving the sinners. Well, that is the whole point of why the message came. Yeah, yeah. So you said one point in saying that it doesn't show. It shows in the Bible that how Jesus came down for the sinners, and in the um, Quran it doesn't show you how God. Um, did, sorry, it doesn't show you how God didn't forgive the sinners. Basically. God doesn't forgive the sinners, which is kind of um, wrong because when you look at the Quran, sorry, when you look at the Quran, the Quran actually came as a warner and for glad tidings for the people at that time. So I'm trying to say to you, so that's the whole reason why God is merciful. The one who sins and turns away from that sin and do righteous de deeds would be forgiven. You see what I'm trying to say to you? That's why when you said that, 
Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we were having discussions. So, yeah. Talking about Muhammad okay. and about Graven eyewitnesses. Images, yes. Images, right? In, with, with Jesus, so, there was, there was so eyewitnesses. Images, Luke in chapter 1 says he gathered his material from eyewitnesses. And the Greek word for eyewitness. Let's say. He's going to come to that. He's going to come to that. He said Paul, but it was in reference to talking about Muhammad. And I'm saying that in the gospel, Luke uses the word eyewitness and he gets it from Polybius. Polybius was a second century historian BC and he said if you're going to write history use eyewitness material and first century historians copied Polybius so when the gospels are being written they wanted to collect eyewitness material the other thing as well Tacitus who says that talks about Jesus dying under Pontius Pilate whenever he said he's quoting a source and he's not sure about it he'll let you know but when he's sure about a source he doesn't say anything in other words he's using documents in Rome and he says that Jesus died under Pontius Pilate. So, let's say like, so you know, we've Jesus, got tons of evidence to prove Jesus. our position. People and Paul, were there were people Maybe there. And also, so in the Galatians, know, it says that he met uh, the apostles, and they confirmed about the resurrection with him. Now, all I'm saying is, when Muhammad, when he's in the cave, who's there? And when you're writing about him, is it based on, it's not based on eyewitnesses where the Gospels are. That's the problem. That's the, you, you, wait, just to ask you, because you said something else about uh, yeah, God doesn't Sunday. forgive sins. We understand. No, no, you said yeah. We had the yeah. Talk about yeah. The so what is it? You God coming down for the You misunderstood what I said. I said the, in the Quran, Allah does not love the sinner. Now, you misunderstood, mis misunderstood that with me saying that Allah does not forgive the sinner. Now, that's not what I said. I said, Allah, hold on. If he didn't love the sinners, he wouldn't send a message. He wouldn't send a message to the sinners. If he didn't love the sinners, just taking your the word the word for it. No, no, I'm saying yeah. this. Um, um, um. Sorry, God, you said yeah. God doesn't love the sinners. I'm saying if God didn't love the sinners, he wouldn't bring his messenger to actually warn them about or turn away a messenger to tell tell them to turn away from their sins. It doesn't. Someone that you don't love, you don't warn them. You see what I'm trying to say? You just leave them to sin in their. Yeah, go on, go on. What I'm saying to you is this, is that by that statement, you're directly disagreeing with Allah. Because Allah, over and over and over again, throughout the Quran, like a drumbeat, Allah does not love the transgressors. Allah does not love this. Allah does not love um, the, the, the disbeliever. Allah does not... So hold, 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 hold on, one second, one second. Basically, there's no way in the Quran where it says Allah does love the sinner. Which is the very message of Jesus Christ is that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So 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 the very the very essence of Jesus Christ coming, which is why we celebrate, you know, um his, 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 him coming to, 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 to earth, is because he loved us. He saw us in, in sin and you know, in like in a in a, in mud, no, no, basically filth. No, and so so let me just clarify what I'm saying. What let me just clarify what I'm saying. What I'm simply saying is this, is that I'm not saying in your Quran that you don't say Allah, if you know someone repents or asks forgiveness, Allah will not forgive them. I'm saying that Allah does not love someone. Whereas, whereas in, in, Christ, in uh, who's a sinner? Whereas in Christianity, what we're taught through Jesus Christ that he loves you. That's why he came to die for your sins. And so that you would see your ways, you see your wicked ways, you'd repent of it, and you'd come, you'd follow him as your Lord and Savior and have eternity with him. Okay? Yes. You know why? When you tell me that, yeah, God doesn't love the transgressors, mate. And you're saying, you see, this is, see, that's what I'm saying. The reason why I'm saying you've got to be really particular with your words when you're saying, when you say Jesus is God incarnate, bro, yeah, you need to understand when God destroyed nations before Jesus came, yeah, you're implying that Jesus himself, what you call his God, destroyed those nations because why? They sinned. So you telling me that, Jesus came down for the sinners. Yeah, listen. And you're saying Jesus is God incarnate. Who was the person that was destroying the nations before Jesus even existed? It doesn't make any sense. It's just, it's just back and forth. You know what I'm trying to say to you? I know it. Sorry, no, I just I haven't finished. Oh, the point that you said transgressors. When he said trans, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. The point when he said transgressors. Hold on, we need to understand. Wait, wait, hold on. I'm saying there are several, several um, ayahs in the Quran that, that say that Allah does not love the sinner. But that's one of them, yeah. When you say transgressors, yeah, you need to understand the meaning of transgressing. 
it's someone that keeps on doing something over and over and over again over and over again they wouldn't adhere to the message but they keep doing bad 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 like they've heard the message and they true to deny it and they persist in the sin that's what you call a transgressor at the end of the day we know jesus when he came when he was in the temple when the people um, when the priests the rabbis and that were doing dealing with usury what did he do he went frustrated he said what are you crazy why are you not doing usury in the temple and he threw their tables because he was angry these were people that knew the message but then contradicted the message and tried to change it on their own jesus got mad it's something normal and humane what a normal human being was doing so when you say that God doesn't love the transgressors, of course he wouldn't. Would you like a transgressor? Okay, I mean, just to kind of wrap this up, I mean, what would, I suppose what would sell it to me, what you're saying to me, immediately, hold on, hold on. You're saying on a level. Yeah, on a level, on a level. What would, what would convince me of what you're saying is if you can show me in your Quran, just like I am able to show you over and over again in my Bible, that God actually does love this, that Allah does actually love the sinner. Can you show me anywhere in the Quran where it says Allah loves the sinner? And that will just wrap it up and we just squash that and we'll move on to something else. God, can, you, can you do that you for see, me? Yeah, I know your tactic. Why are you doing this? No, <laughs> no, I'm no. Just, I'm just not genuinely I'm asking no, because, no. because I tell you, all right, let, me, let me tell you my testimony. Because one of the things that made me gravitate so much towards the Bible and towards Christianity and towards the truth of Jesus Christ is, is his love because his love was so compelling. Think about this. I, you're right. You made a statement, yeah? You said, do you know what? If someone acted a certain way to me, tell me you wouldn't feel like going back at them. It's natural. So, do, do you get what I'm saying? But then when I started to look at the way Jesus lived, I'm saying, look, look at what he taught in Matthew 5. He says, love those uh, and bless those who curse you. Hold, hold, hold. I totally agree with that. One second, that. brother. Like one second. That, brother, like brother, that, brother, brother, brother. That's the thing. I don't have to disagree with that. That's the thing you're... Let me just, yeah, let me just yeah, finish yeah. what you're saying, yeah? He's saying things that sound abnormal. Think about this. Bless those who curse you. Imagine you're cursing me. Bless those. Do good to those who, who, who persecute you. People are coming at you. Maybe imagine someone's trying to kill you. And he said, no, no, just do good to them. He says, um, uh, um, um, if one man tells you to go one mile, go two miles. I'm saying, he's talking, he's talking about stuff that doesn't... Hold on, one second, one second, one second, one second, one second. Let me just finish, let me finish. Okay, okay, sorry, what, sorry, I'm speaking, sorry, what I'm speaking about, you know what, no problem, brother. What I'm speaking about is that I was compelled, I was drawn by the love of God. And what I'm saying to you is that if um, it's, it, love is the, the key, it's the, it's the, it's the essence, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's a major factor of God because it's, it's one of these um, fundamental attributes, okay? Now, when you go to the Quran and you have a Allah, who, who, who's supposed to be God yeah who's supposed to be God and he does not love the sinners what the Bible says actually it says that his love okay his love is worse than some of those tax collectors because anybody can you know that's what the scripture says in my five it says you know who, who can't love someone who loves them who can't do good to someone who does good to them yeah and so what I'm saying to you is that even Allah's love who's supposed to have this perfect love he himself does not even he himself his love um, for sure, and his love, uh, you know, is condition is conditional. Whereas we have a God whose love is unconditional. He loves all mankind. He loves the Muslim. He loves the black man. The God in the Bible, and that's what that's what compelled me towards him. But what I would encourage, so what I encourage you to do is go to your Quran and find me somewhere in the Quran where it says God loves the unbeliever, or God loves the sinner, or the transgressor, or the or anyone. It like me and you. You never find it. You never find it. This is I don't I don't understand what you're saying. Um, God was saying because you know why I'm saying this, yeah. You're saying yeah. Go to the Quran and find any verse. Yeah, you wanna hold it for me? Did it get wet? Yeah, go to any um, um verse in the Quran where where yeah yeah yeah, yeah. where God said yeah yeah no don't yeah, yeah um saying that um go to the Bible um, Quran and see where um God where it says God loves the sinners. The whole point why the Quran was revealed to the people is because of their state to save humanity. That's the whole point why Jesus came down. But what I'm saying is, if he's saying that, it says Jesus came down, yeah, to love the sinners, yeah, because, well, saying that Jesus loved the sinners. I'm saying to you, if Jesus is supposed to be God incarnate, that means before Jesus came down, when God punished the previous nations, did he consider that thought? It, it's a contradiction if you know what I'm talking about. It doesn't make sense because it has the two has to correlate to one. It's either he says one thing 
he agrees with one and disagrees with the other because to be honest let's be let's listen let's look at it logical it doesn't make any sense i believe at the end of the day jesus is, is merciful he did forgive the um, sinners i agree what um thing said but what i'm saying is that the god in the bible before jesus came down there was many nations that were destroyed and that was sin and god wiped them off the face of the earth yeah. I'm going to just finish off this work. Now, I do appreciate this conversation. It was more of a conversation rather than no, no, it's, it's a... It's a brother, yeah. man. It's a brother, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's a man, yeah. Take a God, yeah. Right. So, no, what I do, enjoy, I do enjoy listening to what you're saying and, you know, we both were able to learn something from each other today. Now, what I'm speaking about is, obviously, we're speaking about God. And, we, you know, when, we, when it comes to things like justice, God's justice, um, we know there's going to be a day of judgment, okay? But God can also judge, you know, when he likes, when he feels, when he desires to. You know, there's some people in the Bible, like my brother was talking about, nations that he would judge because of their sins. And so some judgments were temporarily, some temporary judgments, some were long-term judgments, some judgment will take place in the last day, which the Bible speaks about. And so we understand that God um, chooses the times as he, as he feels fit to judge. And so that's not a problem. What we were speaking about is the love of God. First of all, that his love must be impartial, it must be universal and it must be unconditional. Now, if it, if it falls short from any of, from that standard, he no longer is God because he's God because his love falls short of that perfect standard. And so, throughout the Quran, you find over and over again, like a Jambi, where Allah does not love the transgressors, does not love the unbeliever, does not love the adulterer, does not love those. The, the very people Jesus Christ came from heaven to die for. He gave up all he had to, to, to come and die for those people. And so we're here to, we're here to give this message out, to let people know that it's because of the love of Jesus Christ that we can be saved, that we can be forgiven, and that we can make heaven our home. And we can, most importantly, be reconciled and reunited with God who we were once separated through Adam and Eve in the Garden, Garden of Eden. And so we encourage our Muslim brethren to come and know Jesus Christ. God bless.